Welcome back everybody, the History Guy here, ready to continue on with this No Infantry Campaign Challenge on Ultimate General Civil War. We're going into the Battle of South Mountain, which was one of the battles that led up to Antietam. So we're in the Antietam Campaign. This is a big one, 20 brigades involved. So this is what my army looks like. I've got a nice mix of everything. Not a whole lot of melee cavalry, uh, just because they're going to be limited again by the woods in this one. Um, but basically kind of a mix of everything artillery skirmishers um, mounted infantry we'll see how this goes i've got pretty much an idea of what my battle plan is though i guess i'll kind of play it out as it goes along you can see i've got four units of skirmishers 10 mounted units it's kind of a mix i think of about uh six mounted infantry and four uh, melee cavalry and then six units of artillery and so my plan is you can see i, I slightly outnumber him my plan is to sit back on the edge of these woods in front of this uh, body of water here and hopefully let him come at me, reduce his numbers a little bit, bring down uh, so that I've got a decent uh, manpower advantage, and then try to come around his left over here, uh, hit him from the flank, and then advance up here and take the objective, hopefully with a decent manpower advantage. So I think I get everybody right at the start here. So I'm basically going to ignore this side over here and bring everybody up over this way. Um, melee cavalry is going to be right on the extreme edge. I'm going to bring them up around the side and try to clear that out a little bit before I send up uh, any other units that way. I'm going to get the, the guns up in here as well. Here's my Napoleons. I'll move them up closer to the front. Same with the 24-pounders. Sharpshooters, I'll kind of keep out. You know what? I think I'll send them up that way too. See if I can get them on the wing a little bit. The 10 pounders and 20 pounders, I'll kind of keep back. Uh, those are rifled units. So they're better from a distance anyway. Or they're not better from a distance, but I'd rather keep them at a distance where they can be more effective than the smoothbores can. All right. And then these skirmishers, I'll kind of figure out as I go where I want them. Okay, so I'm going to take my time with this. I'm going to go ahead and dismount everybody now. I've got three hours, so it's plenty of time. And like I said, the early part of the... The early objective for me in this is to inflict casualties and reduce his advantage a little bit. I'm going to keep these skirmishers back for now. I'm going to bring the Napoleons and the 20 pounders, uh, or not the 20 pounders, the 24 pounders up. So it looks like he's shifting over to the left now. Go ahead and bring another unit of these guys over this way. I've got one more unit still of mounted infantry as well. Bring up the skirmishers. All my mounted units, my uh, melee cavalry are going to hang back here for now. Anyway. These guys haven't dismounted yet. Oh, look at him coming right at me. Right, let's bring up some support for these guys. So he's going to try to throw everything he's got at me real fast in, a, in this frontal assault right off the bat. Why they're getting flanked. It's like artillery, I guess. 
Yes. There we go. All right. So far, so good. His artillery is gonna kind of unload on me for a little bit. All right, I'm gonna start sneaking the uh, melee cavalry and the sharpshooters up a little bit. in the woods, I'll let these guys fire on me and waste their ammunition while I'm in cover. Alright, so they're causing some decent damage even from back that far. At some point, I'll move them up. So thus far, uh, I've only lost just over 100 men. I've already inflicted 800 casualties. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want to do for the first phase of this battle. see what's going on two hours to go I've lost about 300 men now he's lost 1300 so that advantage I once had which was about 250 men is now at 1200 I want to take out some of his guns up here if I can let him just keep throwing hurling his infantry at me here in the center and we can inflict some nice damage on him these these guys are largely kind of irrelevant at the moment, so I'm going to move them up. I'm going to actually go in slow motion for just a couple minutes here. This is kind of a key, key part of the battle. Let's see if I can catch roads in the open enough. Uh, 
uh, hate fighting in the woods. I'm hoping maybe I can drive these guys out of the woods. Advantage, and it seems like the, the door to the objective is pretty wide open, though I would imagine he'll start pouring everybody over that way at some point. Alright, let's hit this guy. After we hit this battery, hopefully there's nothing else back here. I'll come over and, and swing into these guys. want to kind of evaluate the situation because at some point I'm going to have to move the left wing of my army up. In fact, I'm going to go ahead, even though these guys are doing pretty well, I want to bring up my guns a little closer so they can be even more effective. I want to really deal with this side before I advance up, but it looks like I'll be able to take the objective just fine. There's really not much in the middle at the moment. I'll hold them tight for now.
careful here. He's hitting me with some canister. Just a hair. Fifty-five minutes. The objective is right there. My melee cavalry can jump on that with no trouble. Right now, I'm just worried about casualty infliction. It's down to fifty-five hundred men. I've lost a th uh, twelve hundred. He's lost almost 4,000. Okay, we got a bunch of them out in the open now, but I don't have enough melee cavalry to hit them all, I don't think. Not much left of him now. He's got 3,700 men, and I don't see most of them. Most of them are right here in this unit right there. That's probably the biggest unit he's got left. Let me go ahead and move up on this side. Troops are on his right.
got those are the strongest units that are left. Only 21 minutes left in the battle anyway. And I don't think this one's gonna allow me to continue because it's nighttime already. show up on their kills. It's the shock value uh, of those troops that really gives you benefit. All right. That's going to do it for this one. That's going to bring us to Antietam, which is one I'm, I'm a little apprehensive about, a little concerned about, but I feel like I can probably get it done. So let's take a look at the numbers. Um, 1,700, about 1,800 casualties for me. Uh, inflicted over 6,000 for him. Another good day. Didn't get to grab any supplies this time. It does look like I captured some weapons I can actually use for a change. Well, these are all infantry here, so we'll sell those off. But um, Hey, got another Major General. I needed one for my 4th Division in that 1st Corps. Uh, got a bunch of Brigadiers out of, the, out of the deal too. So, pretty good day. That went really well. I was a little nervous about how that one might go. Um, we're at 88 government points, which means I'm going to need to spend some uh, or else I'm going to have a waste when it comes to Antietam because Antietam you get 25 for and you're maxed out at 100. So uh, I'm going to have to, and I've got a lot of money too, so I'll hold off on that until I start building my army for Antietam, which, uh, let's see, six brigades per division. That actually would be nice to have. Um, so let's first of all take a look at this. So we can pretty much take everything we've got, but it's going to be primarily three 20-man brigades, or 20-brigade corps uh, with the main attack. Of course, we'll get reserves up there. He's got 22,600 as his base army. Mine's at 15. Obviously, he's going to scale up. So I'm going to have to really give some thought to that, but I would love to know your thoughts about how I build my army, how I make this attack, uh, what do you think would work, would not work. Use the comment section below for that. Uh, please hit that thumbs up and hit that little bell as well uh, on the screen there. Uh, that'll give you a notification on YouTube anytime I upload a new video. Uh, it's a great way to keep up with what's going on. And uh, as always, thanks for watching guys and we will see you again real soon.